Okay. And is this dynamic going to come? Or eventually will it be Lingayat, Vokaliga, Kuruba, Ainda, Brahmin votes, Muslim votes, etc.? Look, caste does play a role uh, not, uh, in Karnataka more than perhaps in any other state. Uh, you say you, what we're seeing in UP and maybe even in Bihar to a great extent is uh, Mr. Modi and the BJP are able to subsume caste mm. uh, under the larger Hindutva yeah. uh, project. Uh, can they do that? They've done that with the Lingayats to a great extent and very successfully for the last 20, 30 years in Karnataka. Can they do that with the other castes, with the OBCs, the Kurubas, the Edigas, uh, also with the uh, scheduled castes, with yeah. the Dalits? Can they subsume caste identity under Hindutva? I think it's going to be a great election to know some of these underlying trends. On the other side, uh, I was following Sidramaya's campaign for a day. I think it's fair, fair to say that he has become some kind of a backward classes mm. mascot. Yeah. There's, there's no doubt about it. I mean, I, I was there in Varuna in his constituency. From village to village when we travelled, I think the backward classes are really looking up to it. It was almost like, I mean, I know comparisons are not right in politics, but it was almost like a Lalu Prasad kind of a thing. Mm. I mean, for the backward classes, whether you're, you know, poor Muslim or poor OBC or poor Dalit, uh, he was being seen as some kind of a messiah. He's the guy who came up with yeah. the Ahinda mm. concept. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think that will, will play a role as well. For and sure. yeah. interestingly, what has happened is uh, that in these elections, the Congress party has realized that they are best if they play the role as a regional force. So the Congress party, while it re retains its national party status, realizes that the only way to take on the BJP might and machinery and the popularity of the Prime Minister Modi is by becoming regional, by becoming local. So this election is also a test of local versus national when we look but at the did larger picture. But that all change towards yes. the last lap? The yes, last so the 200 elections. meters, 25th to the 9th, did that to the 8th, did that all change? Harish Upadhyay is with us. Harish, first up, kudos to you, to your team and, and, and everybody on ground. I must uh, give a shout out to everyone who's on ground. Rohini, yourself, Ritu, uh, Aman and also Pallavi. All of you have done some phenomenal work. But let me ask you. As the dust settles, is the voter turnout encouraging? Is it higher than 2018? Will we have a clear leader with a clear mandate? Well, uh, thanks, Aranda. Look at the voter percentage at 5. Uh, it's around 65%. Mm. And uh, looks like it might just probably cross the last time voting percentage and end up or settle down anywhere around 73-74%. Which means there is no significant change in the voter turnout. So who will it benefit? That's one question. The other aspect that we'll have to see here is how some of the crucial regions have voted. The Congress believes Hyderabad, Karnataka will be a game changer for them. Uh, whether it's Sidramaya or others who I've spoken to are saying we will sweep that region. They got 20 seats last time round. They're hoping for extra. And they're saying that region will ensure Congress crosses the triple digit mark. Mm. And that could be a game changer for the Congress. He's also campaigned extensively in Kittur, Karnataka region. As yeah. Zaka was mentioning, He's emerged as a leader of the Ainda community. I'll give you an example. If you talk to some of the Kurubas now, yeah. they no more call themselves Kurubas. Mm -hmm. They'll say, now Sidramaya Jati. They'll say, we are Sidramaya's caste. Yeah. So it's reached to that level. And the Congress believes there is a consolidation of Kurubas, Muslims, and the SE left in favor, SE right, beg your pardon, in favor of the Congress party. And uh, that will ensure they cross the halfway mark. That's the Congress's belief. The BJP is saying, we will change the entire dynamics of Karnataka election forever mm. and ensure that the state votes on same lines, whether it's Assembly or Lok Sabha, it will be development that will matter for people. It is Karnataka. a huge ask for them, especially with B.S. Yedurapa not in active electoral policy or politics, plus that shift of the some of the big faces, Jagdish Shetar, Lakshman Saudi, so many, so some of the others, is that going to hurt them? Central Karnataka, Bombay Karnataka and in South, uh, especially the Bengaluru region, that's where the BJP and coastal Karnataka, that's where they have tried to really, really focus and push. But region-wise, over to the man on the wall. Yeah, I, I think Harish made a great point. I think North Karnataka, which generally has tended to favour the BJP, and you can look at both the Bombay Karnataka region as well as the Hyderabad Karnataka region. I'm just going to play that out uh, in our filter here. Uh, let's take Mumbai Karnataka as well as Hyderabad Karnataka. And if you look at how the BJP managed to sort of swing it, there was a 10-seat difference between the Congress and the BJP. Even though the vote share difference was only two, uh, this is really the, the sort of swing area, if you will. This is where the BJP managed to get its nose ahead of the Congress in 2018. If you were to go back and check how this region, these two regions, Bombay Karnataka and Hyderabad Karnataka voted in 2013, again, look at the difference. The Congress was at 50 seats, 
the BJP only at 17. The Congress, there was a 13-point difference in vote share. They swept both Hyderabad Karnataka and to a great extent Mumbai Karnataka as well. And that's why the victory of 122 in 2013 was possible because this North Karnataka region, both Hyderabad uh, Karnataka as well as Mumbai Karnataka was swept uh, by the Congress in 2013. But in 2018 it was a different picture. As far as the BJP is concerned, two other areas which are critical for them are central. Because again, because of the Lingayat vote, Yadirapa comes from Shimoga, that's right in the heart of the, uh, of the state. And then, of course, you have Coastal, which is the so-called uh, the laboratory of Hindutva, Udupi, Mangaluru, Dakshin Kannada, those belts. Uh, again, both Central and Coastal, uh, you will see that the BJP swept last time around. Take a look at this. Out of 56 seats, the BJP had 42. The Congress only had 14. And the vote share difference also, uh, almost 8% vote share difference between uh, the BJP and the Congress. The JDS had zero seats, zero seats. In, the, in these bells. In fact, in coastal Karnataka, out of 21 seats, I think other than one seat, Mangaluru South, which UT Kadar won, everything else was BJP. Every seat was BJP. Will that change in this election? Because remember, here, this belt also, they changed a lot of their yeah. candidates. I think seven or eight candidates out of those 21, they changed. Uh, so will that help the BJP? Will that aid the BJP? And again, central Karnataka, Shimoga, Davangere, Chitradurga, these belts, because it was the, the Yadiropa factor in these belts, will that necessarily change this time around? We'll have to wait and you see. You see the JDS winning West. 37 seats. It's, it's interesting that it continue to hold down to that Mysore Mandya region and that uh, that belt. And even the hold sway on the Vokaliga votes. DK yeah. Shivkumar has not been able to make the kind of dent that you expect. 55 a seats is quite critical in that Vokaliga segment. Absolutely. I mean, look at, look at the results last time around as well. This is how and why the JDS emerged kingmaker. Out of the 50 seats that are in Old Mysore, which is Hassan, Mandya, uh, Chanapatna, you go all the way up to Mysore, uh, the JDS won 24 out of those 51 yeah. seats. It was the single largest party yeah. ahead of both the Congress and the BJP. The Congress had only 16, a 33% vote share, and the BJP had only 9 seats at less than 20% vote share. This picture, will it turn? Will the JDS have the same kind of impact that they had in 2018? Or will this picture turn? Because this Vokaliga vote has largely been dominated. It's a fight between the JDS and the Congress. The BJP has been trying desperately to make inroads in this belt. They've been uh, leaders like you know Ashwat Narayan, leaders like Prakar uh, um, uh, uh, from Padmanabh Ashok, uh, Ar Ashok from mm. Padmanabh Nagar, who's fighting, who's also fighting against DK in Kanakpura. They are pushing their Vokaliga leaders, someone like a Sudhakar from Chikbalapur. Mm. Uh, they are pushing their Vokaliga leaders, saying that we're also a Vokaliga party. Uh, will the BJP be able to make inroads into hardcore JDS territory? I think Old Mysore will also uh, hold a key. So out of those 51 seats, watch out for whether the BJP is able to improve its tally because if they are not seeing the kind of gains that they are hoping in Old Mysore and if those huge uh, rewards that you saw in Coastal, Central and to some extent in Hyderabad and Mumbai, Karnataka, the similar results are not seen this time around, then you can say that the BJP could potentially be and, in trouble. And the